few kills to quickly swing things. There's a few other plays you can make there. We'll see if they bring something different out, but it does look like they are starting off with that Y-Wing on Fenkar again. We'll see. Nop in the support. Everybody playing their standard lineup. On the side of Gray Squadron, we'll see two ties, a Defender, a Reaper, and a Bomber. Cheese versus Fenkar going to be the matchup to watch here in this best of three as we get started. Yeah, just the the moment. You know, this is the moment that I actually love in these matches, you know, where you're just driving forward, you know, you're just flying, you're like, I don't want to go too fast because then I'll be further ahead than everybody else and I'll be the first to die. You're just sort of charging up your shields, you know, that's the moment where you're going to hit, hit that right D-pad and playing the controller and, and get that power into the shields and fully overcharge your shields so that when you do come in, you're ready to stay and... We see Cheese now just uh, doing, playing the objective. That's what Cheese does for Grey Squadron. He plays the objective, he deals with the AI farm initially, and then starts to work on that cap ship damage. That's his role in the team. So look for him doing a lot of that. Right now we see uh, District taken down. Brunus also traded out. Early pressure from the Rebellion. He'll turn back around, form up on their support. Jeez, gonna be retreating back for the resupply. We'll see the rest of squad Splinter Squadron move in from behind their Corvette. Jeez, engaging dogfights. One of the things about the bombers, obviously, not as strong as it was at the beginning, but Extremely strong, the TIE Bomber at playing offense and becomes one of the most well-rounded ships in the game. Here's some pressure from Scalp onto the back of these defenders. Yeah, the great thing about the Bomber is that it's so good for dealing with the AI shit. You're able to take those multi-target missiles that you can take down four at once. It's a really big deal for that. And what I noticed when we were following Keys around was that every time he locked onto a ship, there was no player name above that ship. So that shows that's how you can spot you can see very quickly, oh, he's just going for an AI right now. And it's important to know when people are doing that, you know, right now, sort of targets of opportunity. That's one of the things that people don't kind of realize, like they're always aiming at the other squadron. And actually there's a whole lot of other things that you need to be doing than focusing on the other, on the other squadron. You know, you could kill maybe four AI ships on your way to objective, but if you never target them, how do you know they're there? So the coordination of Splinter Squadron, they followed their Corvette in onto uh, the Cruiser D, the left side cruiser there. As soon as the Corvette went down, they all turned back around, went for the resupply, and are now slowly collapsing back in. But full defense over here, all the fighting happening around Cruiser D right now. We're on board with Arios. See shields down. Again, this is phase number one. It would be a deviation from uh, from their previous two games, and it will be as they lose out on this run without taking out either of the frigates. Both games one and two able to take out frigates in their first opening phase here. Splinter held just damage and taking out shields. Yeah, having real trouble here, actually, to, to try and stop... Grey Squadron from getting the flip there. Obviously, they weren't able to, and now they're being able to uh, sort of move forward. And we're, we're seeing there is uh, Arios on a defender, but again, you know, I, I kind of thought that we'd see more defenders on this uh, map, to be perfectly honest with you, because uh, dipping in and out of these tunnels in the defender is so easy to do, because you always have boost to stop yourself from hitting a wall. Give yourself a little bit of time to build back up your resources as they push on to the A side, for the B side frigate. Falling in the Raider. But a bit more disjointed Gray Squadron on their push here. They've gotten shields down on B, but no real meaningful damage on either. The shields now drop on A as well. Sending one ship over, Ion Torpedoes over there by themselves over on A. Yeah, Both very down, even we'll right now. Yeah, very, very even right now. You know, we can see that that morale bar is staying near the middle. It's just trading backwards and forwards. We are seeing some players go down, but they're going down evenly on both sides. But this Nebulon B for I mean, it is just being circled by that radar. It does not look happy. Now, the, luckily uh, for it, there is not a lot of other fighter support around. 
the radar, but nobody's actually concentrating on taking it out, so it's just getting free reign here on the Nebulon. Putting in sustained yeah, so they're damage. holding back on that because they want to build up the morale bar so that when they kill that radar, it flips for them. They've gotten it very, very close. It's a huge chunk. Raider. Quickly to come to target as we see those tunnels being dipped into, and now on to the Raider. And they finish it off, 70 health, and falling. Yeah, nice save for all be very difficult for Shrapnel Squadron to build up the morale bar they need to stop this from going the, uh, sorry, it was going to be very hard for Grey Squadron to stop that from, from, uh, flipping over, and now, going back the other way, you know, that first attack didn't go straight for them, what are they going to be able to do with this one? No, but, uh, but yes, Grey, Grey did, I believe, it looks like it, mm, marginally more is it's actually pretty even here as far as the, the how much damage each squad do they both did substantial chunks like a one third and a two third on one ship and the other ship respectively but in out of phase at the very end you see how far this bar is already swinging back in favor of the empire gray was actually able to take down one of the frigates and they leave it to down just at the very end of that phase so uh while we do see splinter back on offense here they are actually uh, losing on the scoreboard you see the X above their name. Yeah, absolutely. That means one of their towers is down, and uh, that's a, a real problem. Wow. I not want that to be happening. And also, for anybody watching, to play, you know, the morale bar does switch the way it's going, depending on which team we're spectating. It's just one of those little minor things that can yeah. catch you out. You ought to watch out for that. It really, because, uh, you know, it's light as your side, but it's the side of the player we're viewing. So we're all learning how to watch this, you know. It's kind of like, how did you watch Ice Hockey when that first started? You know, how did they yeah. know what was going on? It does take a little bit. Learning how to watch, definitely a thing. As uh, we see Splinter Squadron take down one cruiser and now work on the other one, despite their Corvette going down very early in the round. So coordinated efforts as they've got mm -hmm. this one down to a third health, and they've actually evened out the morale bar as well, which was starting to really heavily swing the other way with that end out of phase takedown on the frigate and then the immediate follow-up on the Corvette. This has been some wonderful precision from Splinter Squadron, and they've gained a number of frags as well. You see everybody having to respawn and fly back in from Gray Squadron. And that last, that was this last cruiser almost out of the fight. Yeah, Fenka bouncing his shield backwards and forwards depending on where he's taking fire from, not balancing them there at goes. all. Flipping it backwards when he's taking shots from the back, flipping it forwards when the cruiser starts focusing on him. Oh, sorry, the frigate starts focusing on him, and that, that is just a, a masterful piece of work with the shielding they're able to get out of there despite low hull and with that they've taken out both cruisers they'll fall back to their remaining frigate to resupply and regain momentum here they'll leave only ai targets for the enemy to farm morale off of and now push back onto offense how do cheese and the boys handle this yeah good question uh yeah good question absolutely i mean it, this Looks like it's going to be really challenging. Um, <laughs> the district was trying to trying to out, take out that support before it could get close, but uh, I think we already saw a squadron mass go up, so it's going to be somewhat difficult to get a line on some of these players as uh, they're trying to go for that right hand shield generator, and it is did that pop? I can't tell. It looked like it might be about to explode. The pressure on it. Ah, there it goes. Turn back around. There it goes. Another sh man. They are extending this second phase they made up for the lack of productivity in phase one mm -hmm. with getting both frigates and now one shield generator they're gonna have to fall back and defend they won't get the second one but definitely back on pace with what we saw from match number one as they'll just take the deaths to respawn them across the field yeah that went really really well for them but uh, it, it's not it's not a, a one battle yet i don't think you know that that uh that frigate um, could go down pretty quickly if they're able to focus on it. It's already not no. looking very healthy. Yeah, de definitely not a one battle, especially because like the, the one thing Gray's really got for them here is that they have already taken down that other frigate. So they just have this one in front of them that's a bit weak and they'll already take it down. Now at the very beginning yes. of their phase still, look how far the morale is still in their direction as they push on to the MC-75. Shield generators will be first on the menu. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to get into the right-hand panel, trying to get stopped, get under the shield as fast as you can. 
It doesn't matter if you ram it a bit, you're flying a bomber. You've got the hull for it. You can get out even with that. Try to circle around, get the other side. There, it's opportunity to damage as much as possible. Stay alive for as long as you can. But if you do die, make sure that you die while you did a lot of damage. Oh, and he was so fast. Cheese took out, takes out both shield generators. Shield's completely out on the Star Cruiser and now starting to work on the power systems. This has been a very, very quick fight. This is Gray yeah. is making quick work of this. And the Raider is still up. Yeah, I don't know how that Raider is still up, except the only thing that I can do. Oh, there it goes. It mm. goes down now, I think. And this is such a uh, such a fight right now as we try to figure out exactly what's going on but there is a big explosion oh my we're gosh. switching players too fast i don't know who we're looking at but i can see a lot of fire in the distance and that doesn't look good no they uh we'll see but at this point splinter they they, they managed to stave off the attack they get a corvette in but they still have to take down a shield generator and a power system and ba they basically need to finish on this phase because they have a completely exposed, about 60% health MC-75 behind them. And with the rate at which Cheese has been doing damage, I would not put it past them. Yeah, He's the fact currently... that they didn't get that left shield generator on the Star Destroyer is really hurting them right now. Because they really need to be able to ensure that they're going to be able to get in there quick. But the fact that Star Destroyer has still got shields is going to be so problematic for them. It's only, half she it's only a half health on the right shield generator. We see currently Nope looking to do some attack. See if he can clear out all the way for the Corvette, take out the defenders standing in his way. Now actually looking to maybe a little he was starting to position for a run on the shield generator, not his roll, but um they're gonna go in. Looks like they were putting some power on the power that? as well. Right shield generator down yet. Well, so here comes a a, a a vehicle swap. Yeah, with those vehicle swaps, did you notice that he wasn't aiming for the hangar opening? He didn't fly up into the roof of the hole. It's something that a lot of people don't realize. You can hit the side of the hangar door easier than you can hit the roof of the, <laughs> the thing. Um, and uh, if you hit the roof of the thing, it'll just be back in the hangar, you'll fly in, and you'll dock perfectly. So a great top tip for, for those players starting out. Cool. Be able to bounce, get that hull back up to full, super important. Power system is dropping fast here, but still oh, yeah. standing as the morale bars back to middle. They're gonna need, I, honestly, I feel like the move for Splinter right now is get a few eliminations on the other vessels. As, as the, the, the morale continues to push back in the Empire's favor, if they lose this morale, it's going to be game over. Gray definitely has them between a rock and a hard place. The power system still standing on the Star Destroyer. Yeah, Deastrick bouncing out there. I think because he was on low hull, I think he's fine. Yeah, he's he's come back out in the same ship. So they possibly switching the component but, but, uh, Yeah, I, I really don't know which way this is going to go. I really believe them when they say that this is what happens every time. Power destroyed, and that a, the momentum still st continues to swing. Though this is going to have to be one big defense from Splinter Squadron. They have it down to oh, but the, the, the rockets are starting to come in. The Star Destroyer is getting knocked down. If they're able to finish this one off, they actually might even be able to finish it out of phase. They have such a health advantage on this Star Destroyer, and they're swarming it right now. Mm -hmm. The damage continues to rain in. There's so many weak points now with the power system down. It's so low. Is that it? I think it is. No, it's good job. Prepare to tackle the Empire goes. No, okay, they, they do finish it off there. It they was, got it. it. They, they got it. They swapped phases right as they got the win. What a close wow. game, though. Clean effort. Splinter Squadron yet to drop a game on stream. Yeah. I mean, they did all their dropping in the group stage, and that seems to have been enough for them. But uh, I think it's worth pointing out that uh, it was uh, Grey Squadron that picked to play Imperials, I think, this in this game. So... Uh, that's also losing. Uh, that, that's winning against the uh, the sort of, you know, the uh, benefit of having picked to the, the side. You mm. know, so mm. uh, it's sort of like when you break somebody's serve in tennis. You know, that's a big deal because that's uh, an imbalance, and we want to increase that imbalance if we're competitive players. And yeah. well, I don't Only know how.